Kelly Bolton, you've been conducting a study to look at BRCA1 and 2, well-known breast cancer susceptibility genes in their implications for ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. What is it you are looking at and, and why? So we known for a, that BRCA1 and 2 mutations, as you said, are important risk factors for both breast and ovarian cancer. And there's been some suggestion in the literature that um, survival between BRCA1 and BRCA2 carriers that have ovarian cancer may be different. But a lot of these studies were limited um, both because of method methodological issues and also because of sample sizes. What about the differences in survival between BRCA1 and 2 carriers and uh, patients who don't have that, that mutation? So, so those studies, as I said, they, they have been conducted. And there, and there is some suggestion that carriers have um, an improved survival relative to non-carriers. So, but our goal was to perform a large multi-center study that, um, so that we could assess this in a well-powered manner, but, and also that we could directly compare the survival of BRCA1 and BRCA2 carriers, which has been something that previous studies, which have mostly been smaller studies, haven't been able to assess. Could you describe the study to me then? Yes, yeah, so we collected data from about um, 20 studies that were um, centered across the world. We had about 3,500 ovarian cancer patients, both with and without mutations in BRCA1 and BRCA2, and we compared their survival, both um, for the carriers compared to the non-carriers, but also BRCA1 to BRCA2 carriers. And there's quite a difference, isn't there? Yeah, we found that um, both BRCA1 and BRCA2 carriers um, had a, a significantly improved survival relative to non-carriers. And interestingly, we found that um, BRCA2 carriers appear to have a better survival than BRCA1 carriers, and that was significant. What might be going on? Because this gene is in fact associated with a risk for ovarian mm -hmm. cancer. So how can it be giving protection? So we're, no one is actually um, certain as to the mechanism that drives this, but there is suggestion from in vitro work I mean animals and also from retrospective clinical studies that uh, BRCA1 and BRCA2 carriers actually might um, have an improved response to platinum-based chemotherapy. So the, the mechanism is that um, BRCA1 dysfunction or BRCA2 dysfunction causes problems in repairing DNA damage, and in particular this certain type called double-stranded DNA damage. And platinum-based therapies um, cause double-stranded DNA damage. So if you have this defect in this um, repair pathway, your tumor is more susceptible to um, damage with a platinum-based agent. So that's, that's the thought. But we, we don't know if that's driving our survival improvement, but that's what we're hypothesizing. So in other words, patients who get properly treated mm -hmm. with the right chemotherapy may benefit more from that chemotherapy. They might, yes. But we need to assess this in a, in a large-scale randomized trial. That would be the next step. Here at the meeting mm -hmm. in Orlando, we've been hearing a lot about looking for the right targets and, and getting drugs which, mm -hmm. um, which act at those particular targets. There was a word about PARP inhibition in this context, yeah. wasn't there? What do you make of that? So PARP um, inhibitors are um, targeted for uh, patients that have BRCA dysfunction, in particular um, people that have germline mutations in BRCA1 or BRCA2. And uh, for our study, it would be, it suggests that it would be interesting for these clinical trials to look at BRCA1 and BRCA2 carriers separately, like as two separate groups, because we've shown that they do have different um, survival patterns. What then, finally, are the clinical implications? So we don't have any immediate clinical implications for our results. But as I said, they do have, um, they could be important for clinical trial design, both for PARP inhibitors and for just you know, agents that don't target BRCA carriers. And they also could be used um, for clinical prediction. So they could be incorpor incorporated into other studies that are um, developing models for, for clinical prediction of ovarian cancer survival. Now, this is a massive study between the NCI and Cambridge mm -hmm. University. What's the next step in exploring the genetics of ovarian cancer? And why do you think doctors all over the world should be interested in this sort of work? Well, in terms of um, the genetics of ovarian cancer survival, um, it, especially for, for, for our study for BRCA mutations and survival, the next step would be to, um, to do randomized clinical trials and to 
possibly separate BRCA1 and BRCA2 carriers in these trials to see if they have um, similar responses to therapy. Um, in, a, in a broader sense, both we and others are looking at um, other genetic risk factors that, um, that could also influence ovarian cancer survival, and that'll be coming up in the next few years. And thank you very much for thank joining you. us here on eCancer Television. Thanks.